So sometimes when we see people like Peter Williams, or when we read about Paul in Acts, or when we see other apologetists, you know, we feel people that are extremely smart, they have all the answers, and we can feel, you know, it's, it's too high level for, for me. And we know, or we have experiences that our situation, or even our experience is different. We are sometimes struggling, we don't know how to answer. Sometimes we feel lonely, and uh, like, and we there are some uh, some obstacles. So I will talk which are these obstacles and how to overcome them, what to do with them. So the first one is that there are too many too many uh, subjects or areas we should know, or at least to know something to be aware. And uh, we don't know everything. You don't have an answer for all these areas. So if you are, I don't know, systematic theologian, or if you teach practical theology, I don't want to hurt your feelings. But uh, I think that apologetic is the broader theological discipline. Because uh, people will ask you about, for example, ethic. You know, what about premarital sex or gay issues? You know, about history. You know, I have some examples in my notes. You know, why there is so few or little mentions about Moses in Egypt historiography? There is almost nothing, almost none. Or theology. Yeah, I was Jesus really God? Religion. You know, Christianity and something. And you know, I'm not expert on Hinduism, Islam, or I don't know other religions. So uh, biology. You know, I'm talking about, for example. Evolution, logic, psychology, uh, philosophy. So uh, there are many, many, many areas we will be asking about. And we are not able to be an expert on all these, uh, all these uh, areas. It's impossible. Maybe you are expert on one or two. The best of us are experts on three. And if you think that they are expert on four and more, probably you are uh, you lose to yourself conf uh, conscious. Uh, it's you know you are crazy. Yeah. Uh, three is max, and we know that. And sometimes we we will talk with people that will ask us about history or about uh, I don't know biology or about psychology, and we know little. And because and because of some people are aware of some apologetists are aware of that, they are afraid to, to talk with people because they know, the people will know that we don't know. And it can be an obstacle. And then we do apologetics in a European Leadership Forum, but as soon as we are in the midst of non-Christians, we are afraid. And uh, just I will give you one example. Once I, I talk, I, I did many, 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 many Christianity on trial, if you know what I mean. So I traveled all around Czech Republic and I had public speeches. So there were like 50, 100, 150 non-Christians. They, they fought with me and there was question and answers. And I like it. It was sometimes very aggressive, but I like this atmosphere. And, and once uh, somebody, uh, uh, has, once somebody asked me about evolution, I have almost nothing about evolution. I know that for this evolution plus minus, that we were monkeys and now we are human, but that's it. <laughs> uh, which is a little simple, simple. And, uh, but I, I, I read some, some very basic uh, answers, so I gave them some very easy basic answers. Not like a little bit more difficult than I shared, that we were monkeys, now we are people. But it was like, it was very, it was, I, I simplified. After my speech, somebody came to me and he said, oh, Mr. Novak, it was very good what you talked about. So I thought, wow. And then he said, but your answer about, uh, about evolution was, it was a little, little weak. And I said, really, really? <laughs> and then we started to talk and he explained me. I, I, I did not understand almost anything what he said. <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, when we finished, I asked him, what are you doing? What is your occupation? And he said, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I am PhD in evolutionary biology. Yeah. <laughs> so he knew a little bit more than I did. So I, I asked him, you know, why you did not ask me in front of all people? You could humiliate me and show that 
I don't know much. And he said, you know, Mr. Narak, I don't have need to show that I know something. It can happen, but probably your opponents won't be so nice, uh, usually. You know, he will need to show that he knows. But my advice is, even if you don't know, don't pretend that you know. Sometimes it's not failure to say, I don't know, or I know little. Uh, the other thing is, uh, your experiences will grow if, uh, if you will try it again and again, because you will see, and probably it is your experience, that many questions are repeating. You know, so next time, you can, you can study at home or somewhere, and next time they will ask the same questions and the same questions. Uh, also, don't wait the, that one day you will know everything. And at that day, you will start to, to talk with people, because this, this day will never come. Or, or it will come when you will be in heaven, and you will not need apologetic. So that's the first thing that can be obstacle, that we don't know everything, and we are too much aware of that. But the second, we will never bring a final answer. I'm sorry, but it's, it's possible. You know. So apologetic is not math or equation. It's a clear result at the end. Or physics, or I don't know, biology. Maybe. <laughs> You know, you know, so our answers should make sense. But in the same time, we are not able, from point of view of our opponents, to bring 100% truth. There always will be, you know, maybe, maybe yes, his, 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 he, they will think, you know, it makes sense what he says, but there is still 10% or 20%, maybe it's not true or there will be certain probability. The other thing is that it's very important to know is that apologetic is mostly about reason. About reason. When I heard uh, some, of, uh, some of our speakers here, about, uh, this, for example, about nat na naturalism, it was about reason. No. It's true because first, second, third, and blah, 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 you know. But we are, I, I even think that our beliefs are based also very much on emotions. And maybe more than we are able to admit. Sometimes, and maybe you will, you will disagree, and more and more I do apologetics, more and more I think that apologetics or more is more for Christians than for non-Christians. And I know that you disagree, but I will explain you why. When I hear some testimonies, it's very bizarre how some people became Christians. You know, they, they, they heard something, they have seen something, you know, it's some, some very, sometimes bizarre, just bizarre. It, I almost never heard testimony that I met with some brilliant apologe, ap, apologetist and he gave me 10 answers and I gave my life to Jesus because my reason was satisfied. I am not saying that, and then we become Christians. As I said, sometimes it's very, very bizarre. And then we are asking rational questions. What happened? What happened? And then we need like apologetic answers. Do you understand? I'm not saying that we don't need reason. I'm not saying that nobody became Christian because of reason. But I'm saying that many of our beliefs are based on emotions. Uh, so we can bring very good answer, but people, and people can agree rationally, but if they disagree emotionally, they, there is still gap or there is still problem, and, or they will not accept uh, Christianity. You know, which doesn't mean that we should not do apologetics, but just we should be aware of that uh, reality. The other thing is, we should know that, and we should not forget that we spent uh, that to, to to bring some arguments. We had to spend hours and hours of studying, you know, comparing, uh, discussing, and then we talk with our non-Christian friends or our skeptical friends. We bring some answer, and it doesn't make sense to him, but maybe it's the first, the second information. But for us, 
it's uh, there is some some struggle, you know, hours of of, of questions and studying and do you understand so and it should not be surprised when uh, these people don't think that what we brought is a final answer i will give you one quote from Blair pascal and he said it is not those who write the laws that have the greatest impact on society it's those who write the songs <coughs> do you understand the songs you know it's, it's what he says that it's not about lawyers that bring you know, uh, rational, rational uh, uh, answers, but about those who are writing songs. You know, we use emo song, songs, we use, we use em emotions. And in, you know who was Blair Pascal. I think that he was quite smart, but he knew the limit of reason. The other thing is, we don't like conflict. <clears throat> we don't like conflict. Uh, I don't like conflict. When I was younger and full of energy, it's, it's, it's changing now. You know, I did boxing as a sport, and uh, it's also it's good to do boxing because if you sometimes don't know something, you can you can use it as an excuse that your head is not uh, you know, <laughs> so then you are not very sm you are not smart enough. But well, why, why I'm saying that. In boxing, it's very interesting that you are fighting. You try to beat up your opponents. And as soon as it finished, you are just friends. It just finished, and you don't care. You can go for beer or for tea. Or, you know, it's just finished. And you have no emotions. It's like three minutes or six minutes when you really want to hurt him or to win, to, you know, to beat him up. And then it's finished. But my problem was that it, doesn't, uh, that it doesn't work in normal life. And sometimes I fight with somebody, I big discussions, and then finished, and I was, it was finished for me. It was like boxing. And my wife told me, David, life is not like boxing. These people have, you know, they it take some time. You know, it's, it's not like that you finished and life is going on. It was very good. Uh, not, it was interesting in my marriage, you know, in the beginning that, I had some tough discussions, and that was finished. Was finished, you know, and I could change the theme. So it took me some time to realize that people doesn't work this way. They don't work this this way. But I, I also don't like what it doesn't work this way in life. Usually, people need some time. Uh, but what I want to say is that we don't like disagreement. And we are afraid of disagreement. We are afraid of conflict. And apologetic is. It is about conflict sometimes. It's not brutal conflict. We don't need necessarily scream or yell on other people. But it is about conflict. And we can call it disagreement or misunderstanding or other opinions. But it is conflict. Yes? And we are afraid of that. And I think that many apologists are afraid, so they don't talk about, they talk about God. Is there God? You know, people will discuss forever about God. But as soon as you will talk about Jesus, it's a different story. As soon as you will start to talk about ethic, it's a different story. And you will go into conflict. And so we should not be afraid of conflict. Or we are afraid of conflict, but we have to overcome it. You know. Uh, the other thing is, we have to emphasize again and again that because you disagree with me, it doesn't mean that you don't like me. Or because I disagree with you, it doesn't mean that I don't like you. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my experience from, from, uh, from uh, public discussions or face-to-face uh, -face discussions is that maybe 90% people I experienced uh, or I experienced good discussions. But 10% were very, very, very like tough. And I am also afraid when I speak with other people that they will be aggressive, they will be smarter, you know, and or they will humiliate me. It's it's nothing, it's it's not pleasure. You know. So for example, you know, I, I when I talk somewhere, you know, I said something, and the first question is, what is your education? Uh, 
Uh, so I saw. I so I, I said something. And, okay, okay. It's it's clear that you are not very very educated, but try to say something. <laughs> Or then, or I said something. I was some philosophical questions, or, and people asked me, "Did you study it?" So, uh, yes. Where? Uh, so I read something. I'm not, I'm not asking if you read something. Did you study it? <laughs> um, uh, not really. Okay. Okay. So why are you teaching us? Okay. You can imagine that it's, uh, yeah. And you don't want to lie. <laughs> of course, I studied that. I have PhD and everything. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is, one of the most difficult places for disagreement is where? It's family. That's, that's a tough place. So we must be very wise how to present the gospel in the midst of our closest ones, of our beloved of our family. You know. Sometimes it's better to uh, not to say anything or to, to be silent than to say too much. You know, if you have non-Christian family, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but again, if you, if you want to be good apologetist, you must be ready to overcome conflict, to go into conflict. You know, uh, you must be smart, wise, uh, nice, but it is also about conflict. Do you agree with me? No, okay. So, <clears throat> so the next thing is, we are living, I don't know if you will understand, hyper-correct world. Does it make sense? Hyper-correct world. Correctness, political correctness, you know, it's a big word in, in, in West Europe, and now it's coming to Central Europe, and it will go to maybe to East Europe. Uh, but it means that as soon as we have different opinion, uh, almost about everything. Uh, you look very intolerant person. You know. And uh, there is saying, you know, that don't look what divide us, look what unite us. So we must be brothers with Muslims and you know with with, uh, with gay or with with everybody. And I'm not saying that they are bad. I, I'm, I'm neg nothing against these minorities. But, but there are things that we have common. At the same time, there are things we don't have common. And then we are with Muslims. There are many things that are different. And if we will look only what unites us, that something is wrong. Because there are many things that divide us. But in Europe, to say that loudly is almost dangerous. Uh, <clears throat> So sometimes it's almost risky to say that Christianity is not only different from Islam, it's very different from Islam. So, you know, try to say that in, in England, you know, somewhere. Or Jesus was different for Buddha, Buddha. Or Christianity has different plan for, for sex than we see around us. And not only different, better. And as soon as we will say it's better plan, it will be, it will be, people will say, ah, you are not correct. You know. Or, you know, unique way of salvation, a better way of salvation. As soon as we will say that, better or even different, probably we will be accused as intolerant or incorrect. And it will be getting more and more uh, in, in Europe, probably all around Western uh, world. Yes, some apologetists are intolerant. They are incorrect because they offend other people. You know. And it's bad. They are arrogant. Uh, at the same time, when we talk with people, we should say, we will also compare and when we will compare, it, we will, we will, and to, to compare something doesn't mean that I'm intolerant. It's just normal. We should be aware of that before, even before we start to discuss. Uh, next, and it's, now it will be overlapping. At this point, we can look as arrogant. Probably every apologetist knows this question. How or do you know that you have the truth do you know this? 
How you can know that you or Christianity is the only or the best religion on the world? And of course, I know the answers and you know the answers, but it's tough. And then we are like, we, we, we try to ah, we don't, I, it's, whatever you will answer, I will not uh, say what you should answer on this uh, question. But uh, as soon as we people feel that we think that the Christianity is the best religion on the world, um, we look as arrogant. How you can say that? How you can say that? You are a very arrogant person. Uh, or Jesus, you know, how, as, as soon as we will say, as soon as we will quote that I am the, the way or only way and truth and life, you know, from other points or from others' points of view, you know, how, only way, only truth. It's arrogant to say that. You cannot say that. Uh, or how you, how, you, how, how you can be sure that you are right and millions of people are wrong. Yes? And there are some really, really Bible-believing Christians who know who will go to hell and who will go to heaven. So they will say, oh, all these Muslims and all these Hindus and all these, they will go to hell. And, you know, if you, if you will say that, the, 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 the discussion is over. Nobody will discuss with us anymore. You have to say, you know, I don't know we'll go to hell. You know, it's not my business. You know, I know that I should speak about gospel, not to to say we will be saved and we will not be saved. Or how you can be sure that the Bible is only sacred books or book, and other books are not sacred or holy. And there are many, many questions. And as soon as we use word only, like Bible, Jesus, salvation, people think that we are arrogant. And this is, and it stops conversations. Uh, and uh, so what to do with that? We have to say, or we have to always remind that uh, to have strong conviction, strong belief, doesn't mean that we are arrogant. You know. And also, if our opponents, if they have no opinion, it means that they have opinion, that there is no opinion. So they also have strong opinion. Uh, I know that it's, it seems, it looks easy from pulpit. The other thing is when we are in the midst of discussion. But again, we should remind that I'm not arrogant. I have just strong opinion. I, 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 and I, I, I uh, I expect that you have also strong opinion. And I'm not saying that you are arrogant. Just talk about it. It's opinion, strong opinion against op strong opinions. My opinion is Christianity, your opinions, that there is no opinion, for example. Or that there is, I don't know, the only way is Buddhism or whatever. But it doesn't mean that you are arrogant. And it doesn't mean that I'm arrogant. Does it make sense? You know? Uh, the other thing is don't forget that apologetic is dialogue, not preaching. You know, sometimes I heard some apologetists and I was in between like uh, listeners and I became almost non-Christians. And I really asked them, because it was horrible. They preached and preached and preached. Nobody's interested about one hour of preaching that God is only, or Jesus is only way to, to heaven. Apologetic is about discussion. And if you are afraid of discussion, we should do another theological discipline. Teach at some seminary. They will listen to you. Or they will pretend that they listen. <laughs> I'm a seminary teacher, so sometimes I have this discussion. Indifference. It's terrible. Indifference. It means, you know, uh, in apologetic, we th uh, that there is one basic premise, and it's that people have different opinions, they, they disagree. You know, they have different life views. As indifference means I don't care. So I will give you some model situation, yeah? I came and I ask, do you think that Jesus was resurrected from the dead? I don't care. Okay, so is Christianity the only way how to be saved? I don't care, maybe not, maybe yes. And what do you think? 
And the answer is, I don't think. So you think, and why you don't think? Uh, because these things have nothing to do with my life. Okay, so what about your eternity? Where will you spend your eternity? I don't care about eternity. I love, uh, no, I love, I live now. And it's, it's very, if somebody is indifferent, it's very difficult to discuss, you know. I, I like people who disagree, who hates me because, no, I don't like if they hates me, if they don't like me because I have different opinion, because we can fight, we can compare. But if so, I don't care. Two examples. Once I, was, I, I spoke at some high school and I had 20 minutes speech and there, there were another 20 minutes for question and answers. So I spoke, I had good feeling from my speech. And then I said, so please ask any questions and I will try to answer. And one boy raised up his hand and, can we go home? <laughs> or do we really have to sit there another 20 minutes and to listen? So. And there was a teacher and she said, yes, you have to. <clears throat> it was very, very encouraging. You know. <laughs> <clears throat> and the other, other, other question, but, but don't repeat it, please. Don't, don't try to do it. But also, once I've been at some school and we talk about ethic, there were non-Christians. And I said, ah, it's no ethic and it's more a question of personal decision. You know, you, you know this. Uh, uh, these arguments and you know uh, there is no reason why to uh, obey some ethical system or to to follow some ethic and yeah you believe in God you listen God you obey God and I obey I don't know uh, uh, some somebody else so I, I obey him you know or I don't obey anybody you know, it just it's a matter of decision so I turn around I uh, like this, and I pretend I start to pee. <laughs> I just pretended, you know, I, I did not pee. You know. <laughs> and, and then I, I realized that the atmosphere started to change. And, oh, how you can do it? Yeah, yeah, you are in classroom, you cannot do it. Even teachers started to say something. <laughs> and I said, but you said <clears throat> that it's just a matter of choice. And that's why I have need. <laughs> so there is a corner, so <laughs> why not? <laughs> That was the problem. They were, so sometimes if people are like, but again, you know, it's do it, but only in certain context, you know. But, but if people are indifferent, <laughs> but if people are indifferent, try to do two things. Either to shock them, and you can do it better way. Like for example, sometimes I use that I will kill your grandmother. Why? Because she's old. So, so what? And we don't need old people, we need young people. She's like, now I don't want to hurt your feelings. So she's, I wanted to say 60, but I think that I should. <laughs> no, she's 70 and it's, the world is for young people, so I will kill her. And she's ugly. But the discussion starts. Why not? Why not to kill your grandmother? Or the other thing is, talk about Sometimes people are intolerant because our speech or our discussions, it's not, it has nothing to do with their daily life. So I, I think that uh, we can talk about natur nat nat naturalism or about Jesus, if Jesus was really God. And I think that these questions are, that are great issues. At the same time, for normal average people, it's better to start where they are and to talk about some, some, some things from their daily life and to start discussions uh, when, uh, to talk about uh, sex. It's, it's always an always, uh, uh, issue for discussion. So about marriage, about and why we should do this and not to do this. You know, something that has something to do with their daily life. Then they are more like in touch. So this either shock them, and, but be wise how to shock them. And the second thing is, uh, try to start where they are. You know, don't talk too quickly about some high apologetical issues. Does it make sense? The last thing, our own doubts and questions. When I started to do apologetic, it's like uh, 30 years ago, when I was 20, 20 something, now I'm 52. So soon they will, they will joke that we should kill this <laughs> 20 plus people. So I thought 
And I started to do apologetic because I expected that there will be one day when I will have no doubts. And I will know, it's, brothers and sisters, it's even worse now. <laughs> more things I, I know, the more doubts is coming. And it's reality. And I think that healthy faith needs doubts sometimes. Do you understand? Doubting. And uh, mm, uh, we can have personal crisis and, and we can, or some new questions will come and answers that worked two years ago now doesn't work or don't work. You know. What was clear 10 years ago, it's not clear now. Or especially when we, when we meet with liberal theologians, sometimes it's, they have good, good ideas and sometimes it's very difficult when they show you some other perspective on the Bible, Jesus, it's not easy. For me, it was, it was difficult. Uh, and we have to again and again to come through these doubts and questions and to search for new answers. And I think this is very healthy. Don't be afraid of that. Of that. Uh, somebody said, what is without shaking? Because shaking is not fast, like tough. Or fast is not solid. What is not without, what is not, what is without shaking is not solid. So shaking is part of our faith. Sometimes you just don't know. And, uh, for and I will give you personal things on the end, what happened to me. And I'm not saying that I'm a great apologetist. I just used, and I, I had many, many, many apologetics, apologetics discussions. I read something and I taught apologetics, so I know something. And one, uh, two months ago, sometimes my body started, uh, you know, it didn't work as it used to work. And, uh, and also, you know, I, I competed. I know I'm a runner, so I had some competitions and I have full schedule for all activities, you know. And so I had to the doctor. I went to the doctor and she, so she said, to make it shorter, she said, you know, Mr. Novak, Probably you will not like it because people, if they have this sickness, they don't like it, but I have one bad message for you. Your sickness will never ever be healed. Can I say that? I said, what? And it, you know, it was, it was a horrible pain. So it was so painful. You know? And your immune system failed. <laughs> and uh, I, 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 many times I talk about evil why God, you know, allows evil. And I, I know all the answers. But now it was on myself. I said, no, it's it's mistake. Only 1% of population has this disease. It's a mistake. It's impossible. It's, it cannot be me. And it's uh, usually these people are fat. They have bad, uh, uh, they have bad diet. You know, they don't care about their body. But uh, I have a good body. I am not fat. So, but she said, no, Mr. Noak. And then there, 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 there are other things. Maybe we will give you some medicine and uh, you, we can suppress it and you can live with it. But there is also a possibility that we will, it will not work. And your life will be 15 years shorter. And in two years, you will be on a wheelchair. Wheelchair, you understand? You know, I, and I came home and I know all the answers. And I have, I have been in the middle of deep crisis and I cried and I could not believe that I, that something like that happened to me. First, that I am sick. And the second thing, that I'm not able to, to, to deal with it. I'm apologetist, I'm a pastor, I talk about heaven, I encourage people and as soon as something like that happened to me, all the answers are short did not work. And I am not proud that something like that happened. Now I'm getting better because medicine works and I, I have hope that my body will work never like before, but it will be okay. You know? So I'm full of hope and I feel great now. It hurts, but nothing compared to, it's nothing when I compared it two months ago. But really, don't, but now I see that 
God showed me that even if I have all the answers, it doesn't mean that there will be no doubts. So it's like lesson from my life as a last point. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you for your uh, patience.